Right. <clears throat> uh, so my presentation consists of, sorry, I don't know about the numbering, but when I download from Google Slides, it just uh, turns all into one. So my presentation consists of the four main parts. The first I'm gonna introduce why and the motivations behind developing this soft, uh, Python software. Then I'm gonna introduce the workflow of uh, Alpha Paradigm. Uh, then I'm gonna, after that, I'm gonna show you how this package has been used in uh, some studies and what the advantages and what the features, uh, useful features are in the package. Then lastly, I'm gonna introduce the latest major updates on this package. So uh, Alpha Fold Mortimer was released later in the late 2021 and Immediately after the release of Alphabet Mortimer, there has been increasing uh, interest in the field to fold multi a huge number of protein complexes uh, using Alphabet Mortimer. And some benchmark study has shown that uh, Alphabet Mortimer has surpassed all the other previously developed uh, docking software and become almost a de facto uh, modeling tools for uh, predicting protein complexes. So I foresaw at the time, I foresaw the demand of the large number of modeling using other photo is already huge and we only grow. Then I begin to sit down with my supervisor and examine the code of Alpha Fold. And uh, we first identify some obst obstacles that uh, hindered the users from using Alpha Fold on, on Mars. Uh, the first obstacle is that uh, the previous part of MSA and template alignments are running on CPUs uh, inevitably, when you are using Everfold by default, you are re reserving GPU resources, but through the uh, calculation of uh, MSA and template alignments, all your GPU resources just sitting there idly, and obviously it's not efficient. Uh, and then, uh, because our groups was modeling the human pore complex last year, and the human pore proteins are incredibly large and complex, uh, based on our experience, when we use Everfold, when the protein sequences are too long, uh, the program may sometimes fail to find the interfaces, even though we know these interfaces are there. However, if we somehow slice the protein or fragment the protein sequences and then use the alpha to predict fragments of proteins uh, with, with the interactors, then alpha can reproduce or reconstruct the interface very well. Uh, at the time, I was already developing the prototype of Everpodum. Then I saw this need of uh, interface, a convenient interface, so that the user can specify some part of the regions of interest of the protein when the sequences are too long. So uh, this is the second obstacle I have to overcome. And the last obstacle is that when the number of models are too big, obviously you end up with hundreds of folders with thousands of PDB files, and no one is gonna go through them one by one. Uh, so I have to develop a, a tool or a summary tool so that the user can have a brief, neat overview of all the models they have produced and uh, ideally with the model quality as well. So these three uh, these three obstacles form the three ma major pillar of my software called Alpha Pulldown. To address the first obstacle, I, uh, I separate the process of computing into three main parts. And the first part was uh, was done by this. Sorry, the first part was done by this uh, command Python script, where you just dump in your sequence of interest. And at this stage, you can use the full length sequence. Uh, and after that, we are going to call the CPU resources from your computing cluster and compute all the alignment for you, and store the matrices as Python pickle file. So no GPUs are involved at this moment. Only after that, we start using GPU resources and we provide the users with four different modes. Uh, the first mode is called Podon mode, which mimic the Podon experiments in WellLab, where you have one or more bait proteins anchored on a column. And then you have a list of candidate proteins that go through the column. Uh, in the end, you find the possible interactions by eluting uh, the complexes from the column. So then in the podon mode, you are basically doing the same thing, but in silico, uh, you specify one or more proteins as a bait protein and a larger list of candidate proteins. And then alpha podon will automatically form this pairs of interactions or complexes for you. 
Then we have home oligomer mode, where you can give a text file specifying uh, how many subunits are there in your home oligomer complexes. Then the custom mode allow you to specify any combinations of proteins or protein fragments. So as you see here, uh, in the MSA calculations or template calculation, you don't have to specify the regions of proteins that you're interested. Only after that, you can uh, create a text file, which I'm going to show you later on, to tell Alpha Pro down which part of the fragments of the protein that you're interested in, and then Alpha Pro down will handle that for you. And I want to mention that it's not limited to just uh, pairwise modeling, because uh, you can add another layer of uh, another list of candidates at the end of the list, so you can have more than just two proteins uh, predicted together. So after this part is finished. And I've created a singularity image that incorporates a lot of uh, third-party software that would assess the model quality for you, which I'm going to show you later on as well in, in detail. So in, in the end, you will have a Jupyter notebook where you have a graphical summary of the 3D models, uh, the 3D structure of your model, and also the PAE plot of the model. Then, in addition, you have a tabular summary, a CSV table, that reports all the uh, scores and the properties of the interfaces. Uh, so this is the interface I mentioned before where users can specify um, any regions of the protein that you're interested in or any combinations of protein complexes. So uh, in, instead of going into your actual sequence and try to pinpoint which residues are number what, then you simply create this text file um, and, and with the regions of interest. And some, um, maybe some domains come from two different, two, uh, two different regions and it's not gonna be a problem. You can just add a comma and then continue the regions of interest. Another feature is that our program will, re will retain the original numbering of the residues so you don't have to map it back uh, to your original sequence. And this is uh, a screenshot of the Jupyter notebook. I don't know whether it's too small, but it's interactive, which means on the left side you have the bookmark, uh, bookmarks. Uh, each of the bookmark correspond to one of the model you have created in your folder. And once you click the bookmark, it will automatically jump to the regions and show you display the PAE plot and the PLDDT plot. Sorry, the 3D model colored by PLDDT per residue, and also the 3D model colored by chains. Then you will have a neat overview of all the models you have created instead of going through the folders one by one and checking the PDB models uh, <clears throat> individually. And this is a tabular summary I mentioned. Uh, as you see here, oh, I have incorporated a program called PI score, which stands for Protein Interaction Scores. And it is, it is developed by Maya Tops Group from UCL and now based in Hamburg as well. So this is a SVM classifier trained on the PDB structures sorry, on, on the cryo-EM structures. And then this uh, program will check the properties of your interfaces, such as how many polar residues are there, how many hydrophobicity residues are there, or salt bridges, et cetera. And then in the end, give you uh, a score. And plus means if the score is positive, that means it's close to the native state interface. If it's negative, then that means it's um, probably a, not that close to the native state interface. And the absolute value of the score comes from the SVM classifier telling you how far away uh, this data point is from the SVM boundary. And apart from PS score, uh, it will report the scores from Alpha, Alpha Fold itself like IPTM and PTM. So IPTM, PTM, or P IPTM. Um, in addition, I have incorporated the software developed by, sorry, the tool developed by uh, Ani, the P.Q or M.Q. Uh, the other program will automatically use P.Q if there are just two chains and uh, it will change to M.Q calculation if there are more than two chains. But thanks to the talk today, uh, I'll update our software with 0.2 version of P.Q. <laughs> so, so why do we need these uh, third-party software. So we have a showcase in our Alpha Podium publication. So this is a, a case where we screen the possible interactors of human EIF4G2. Uh, as you can see, the top three models coming from Alpha Podium, uh, they, are, they are with 
very good IPTM score. And then if you just rely on IPTM score, you, you will see, okay, I'll take these three as possible true interactions. And then um, when you check the other three scores, uh, the P.O.Q. score are good and P.I. score are also pretty reasonable. But then uh, in the late, in the third example, the P.I. score telling you maybe uh, it might not be a very native interface, uh, but we would advise you maybe practice some cautious when examining this interface. And on the bottom left, we show a case where the alpha four score is pretty good, 0.8. But then if you just rely on these lines of information, you may take this as granted as if it's a real interactions. But when, if you take, uh, take a look at the P.O.Q score, it's 0.4, and the PI score telling you there is no interfaces detected at all. And we have examined the structure, which it turned out the interface is super small, just coming from one short helixes. In this case, we would strongly advise the users to uh, be cautious. And in, in, in the third example, I showed that uh, the alpha four score is not that good. It's below 0 0.6 in IPTM. But however, the P.Q score is quite reasonably high. And the PI score is telling you this interface is very likely to be uh, a native state interface. So even though the, uh, as you can see here, this uh, interaction is consists of, consists of uh, structured structured protein, and some disordered region from another protein. So in this case, even though the alpha four score is low, um, because of the other lines of evidence, uh, the users may decide we are still going to validate these interactions. So this is just an example of how these third party evaluations could be helpful in some cases. And then I'm going to demonstrate how uh, fragmenting proteins are going to be useful. So we are in collaboration with uh, BNITM at Hamburg studying a, lot of viral, a virus called Lassa virus, and it has a big RNA polymerase, which plays an important role in this viral replications. And um, this RNA polymerase is also known as L protein because it's significantly long. It's more than 2,200 residues long. So when we use alpha fold, and we, if you use a full length sequence of L, and inevitably we have to require A100 card just to fold the monomer of the monomeric L protein structure. And if we want to find possible human interactors of L protein, then it's gonna take much longer time and the computing resources are way limited. So we have consulted our collaborators and they gave us the nine regions of interest. So we split this super long protein into nine fragments. And in the end, uh, we can uh, fill in the jobs with uh, the gaming card, which are more available to us. So we have more than uh, about 4,000 models to check. And then in the end, it finished within a week of computing time. From the 4,000 um, candidates, we selected a couple of them and sent it to our Valac our well lab colleagues to validate, and one of them appeared to be co immune, uh, co IP'd with the R protein, and they are uh, taking further investigation into th these interactions. And another showcases uh, our collaborations with uh, Christian Lowe Group at EMBL Hamburg, where uh, the interactor comes from uh, just had a, a helix and a long disordered region. Then when we use Everford, uh, because of disordered region, the overall model and the interface quality is pretty bad. Then we slice, uh, we chop off the uh, disordered region and just keep the alpha helix. Then we get a reasonable model and uh, the crucial sidechain interactions could be uh, correctly mod modeled after we removed uh, the disordered region. So this is just two cases to show you sometimes the fragmenting proteins are important. And here are some new features we've added to Everpod ever since we published it last year. And the first one is we have a new mode of pairing MSA. As, as Arnie showed in his presentation, pairing MSA is pretty important to get reasonable good, reasonably good model from Everpod Mortimer. However, in, in his paper, uh, Arnie described that they used pairing based on the OX ID. However, when I checked the Everpod code, they are not based on the UX ID, but simply based on the uh, string string text describing the species. And what we found is that when we model, uh, for instance, bacteria complexes, uh, many different species are 
labeled at the same string, like with the same string in the Unipol database, but then that OX ID are different. So as a result, the pairing uh, by default alpha fold is quite messy and not always accurate. So I modify this part of the code so that uh, our alpha pull down now take only the OX ID from Uniport to pair with another OX ID. And we are investigating whether this new way of pairing can improve the model quality. But for me, I've seen some improvement al already in my cases. Another key major update is we have integrated some popular alpha fold training infrastructure. As you see, as you may know, uh, DeepMind didn't release the training code so that there are uh, some third party software based on PyTorch uh, training alpha fold, open fold, unifold, and whatever fold. So uh, nowadays, there are more a growing interest and demand for uh, customizing or fine tuning alpha fold so that uh, the researchers can have a fine tuned weight and perform some, some other predictions or learning tasks. That if they still want to use alpha fold, in a massive style like alpha pull down, then they can simply grab our tools and dump in whatever new ways they have fine tuned. And then we can reproduce the massives. Uh, they can use alpha pull down to run a number of job, large number of jobs and at the end get the, the neat summary as well. Then the last update is uh, we are trying to build a custom, customeric multimeric template for alpha fold multimer because so far Alpha Multima just used monomeric template for each single chain. But then uh, our colleague Dimitri is working on a way to telling Alpha Fold, oh, you have to take this uh, multimeric template, which record the relative orientation between chains as a template and take into account of this information as well. So we are in, uh, working together on this project. And please pay, uh, feel free to visit his poster today and he's gonna tell you more about this part of update. And there's some other auxiliary updates. Uh, you're, you're welcome to visit our GitHub post. So now that I'm approaching the end of my PhD contract, I'm open for chats and also more, more importantly, I'm open for jobs. So please, uh, and Alpha Podon is just part of my PhD project. And in addition, I've taken part in some multiomics data uh, analysis and also I've taken full advantage of EMBR's juicy GPU clusters and build some other neural network myself in my spare time, which my supervisor may not uh, strongly disagree uh, to, uh, agree with me. But uh, so I'm interested in applying AI in drug discovery and small peptide design, and I'm, uh, have my eyes on AI generative content in drug design as well. So if you have, have the similar idea or projects, please feel free to reach me today at during the poster or check out my LinkedIn or GitHub. Um, thank you all for listening and I welcome any questions. <clears throat>